It's on. Why are you not there? Okay, sorry. I'm combing my hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not. I can't see you at all. Because I'm not logged in. I couldn't get in. It was, it was telling me the meeting hadn't started. Yeah, it hadn't because I was trying to use the computer that I wanted to use. And I couldn't. I had to go back on my personal computer because the work computer is not working for that again. It did work last time I used it. Hi, Maggie. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> How are you? Not too bad. Yes, I have to wait for it to pop up. There it is. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, you guys can hear me and see me and everything's good? Yeah. Your audio is a little bit muffled. So. Oh, it's because, okay, Cindy, I'm going to hang up on you. Sorry, I was on the phone with Cindy and oh. uh, my computer was muted. Okay, so you guys can hear me okay, right? Yes. yes. All right, Cindy, can you make me the host? Please. I am the host. Here I am. Okay, so I am going to make you the co-host, Cindy and Maggie. I'm gonna make you the co-host. Um, all right, Maggie, can you just share your screen so I can get organized here? Okay, great. what I'm doing here. Okay. All right. I just got the recording going. Okay. So this is the January 19th, 2021 meeting of the Transportation and Parking Commission. My name is Donna Lascali. I'm the Director of Public Works. I am the chair. And um, let's, uh, let's do roll call uh, when you are ready, Beth, please. Uh, Donna, are you here? I'm here. Jody Casper. I'm here. Jamie? I'm here. Devin? I'm here. Wayne? I'm here. Nancy? I'm here. Karen? I'm here. Jim? Present. And I don't see Gary. Oh, somebody's here on the phone. Gary Hartwell, are you here? Shall I unmute the person so they can say who they are? That's me, um, just in case my connection freezes up. And then, uh, so it looks like Gary is not here and Adam Novit, are you here? Doesn't look like it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got eight people, eight voting members. Okay, so we're missing Gary and Adam. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so um, I will open up the meeting by inviting anybody who has any public comment to please address us. This can be on any topic, um, but it, it can also be on topics related to what we have before us on the agenda this afternoon. So uh, anyone who would like to speak on any topic, anyone who would like to speak about um, uh, Cross Street or anything else that's on the agenda, uh, please raise your hand and we will recognize you and you can speak. Okay, seeing none, no public comment, so we will move on. Um, next item is approval of minutes from previous meetings, September 15th, 2020 and November 17th, 2020. May I have a motion, please, for a positive recommendation? So moved, this is Wayne. I'll second, it's Jody. Thank Any you for identifying yourselves, that's really helpful. Any discussion on the minutes of September 15th, 2020 or November 17th, 2020? Hearing none, roll call please. Donna. Yes. Jody. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Devin. Yes. Wayne. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Karen. Yes. Gary. I'm sorry, um, Jim. Yes. Unanimous passing with eight 
people. Thank you, Beth. Next is reports from departments and subcommittees. Um, I'll speak for the DPW. This is kind of a, a quiet time of year, at least for construction purposes, but I do wanna mention that our North Farms Road reconstruction project is substantially complete. There's a little bit of uh, uh, shoulder work and kind of landscaping issues that will require some attention in the spring. Um, but uh, for the most part, everything's done. We did unfortunately have a water main break right in the middle of our new blacktop, which we will also address in the spring. Um, but overall, uh, the project was a success, a little bit over $2 million, very close to on budget and, and certainly on time. So thanks to the members of my department who had a hand in that. There's also two ongoing mass DOT projects, uh, Damon Road and the Roundabout and a uh, stack of, of utility pole relocations associated with that along Damon Road that will be winding their way to city council. There'll be a public hearing that is announced on that. Um, on those relocations uh, this Thursday. Um, and, and then the council will actually take that up on February 4th to help grids stay on track with the, with the timing with which they need to deliver that to Mass DOT. So those are DPW updates. Does anybody else have any updates to share with the commission? I do, this is Wayne, if I can go. So uh, just three projects the mayor approved for uh, construction projects for 2021 using sort of non-traditional funds. Um, first one is Florence Center, um, which is mostly uh, wheelchair curb cut ramps like we've done elsewhere, uh, and probably some sidewalk panel and some tree re replacement, um, but the sidewalk panels are the, uh, the curb cuts are the, are the biggest part to bring that into compliance. Um, second one is Pleasant Street, you know, we did this big project from Hamden Avenue down to Hockman Road uh, three years ago. This is the completion at the next phase from Hockman Road down to the roundabout. Um, and then the final one is Leonard Street, which um, we were looking at the intersection of Leonard and Haydenville Road to make it more of a right angle. Um, we had funding from traffic mitigation three or four years ago. It was on hold because DPW has to do some sort of underground infrastructure. And um, I understand it's in close, so we're planning to advertise it so we're ready as soon as the DPW infrastructure work is done. Thanks, Wayne. Anyone else have any announcements or updates for us? Okay, hearing none, we'll move to matters before the commission. The first is a proposed ordinance for a stop sign on Scanlon Ave at Florence Road. So uh, before we get into the agenda items, um, what I would like to do is just uh, briefly speak about kind of how the process through which we got here and um, before we take up this item. So it, the, the, the next three things on the agenda are in response to a series of traffic and congestion problems that were experienced by this neighborhood last summer as a result of influx of traffic, um, parking to access the the river on hot summer days. And so in response to that influx of traffic, we have undertaken a very thorough review of the network of streets in the area. And we have, it, we meaning uh, this commission and DPW and the police department, um, as well as through engagement with Councillor Jarrett and to a, a lesser extent, Councillor Labarge, we have um, looked to, to try to find solutions to these traffic issues by uh, introducing a series of ordinances here that is meant to alleviate the conditions within the neighborhood and provide an enhanced level of traffic safety. So that's just kind of a, a comment on how we got here. And now there are three uh, ordinances um, that seek to address what I just described. So the first is the, this proposed ordinance for a stop sign on Scanlon Avenue at Florence Road. Um, so uh, I, what I will do is I will read the ordinance and then ask for a motion. Upon the recommendation of Transportation and Parking Commission, an ordinance relative to a stop sign on Scanlon Avenue. An ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and City Council assembled as, followed, as follows. <clears throat> Section 1, 
that section 312-113 of the Code of Ordinances be amended as follows, 312-113, Schedule 12, Stop and Yield Intersections, Location, Scanlon Avenue, Direction of Travel West at the intersection of Florence Road. And I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please. I'll make a motion to send this forward with a positive recommendation to City Council. That's that was Jim? Fine. Yep. I'll second, it's Jody. Okay, thank you. Um, so again, what we did was we reviewed the network of streets in the area. And upon our review, we determined that there is considerably uh, or considerable volume on Florence Road, upwards of 6,500 cars a day. Um, we've discussed in the past uh, that there are um, warrants to be met when installing stop signs. And one of those warrants is uh, the daily volume. Um, this certainly hits the volume or hits the warrant rather for daily volume. Um, this is a, really a safety issue with sight lines as well, pulling onto Florence Road. So while we were on a neighboring street, Cross Street, we determined that it was a good time to, to also install a stop sign on, on Scanlon Avenue at this intersection. So that's the background of how this came to be. Is there any question or discussion? Okay, hearing none, roll call please. Donna. Yes. Jody. Yes. Jamie. Jamie. Yes. Yes. Sorry about that. Uh, Devin. Yes. Wayne. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Karen. Yes. And Jim. Yes. Passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Next is a proposed ordinance for stop signs on Cross Street at Florence Road, Florence Road and Bliss Street. So again, I will read the proposed ordinance upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission, an ordinance relative to a stop sign, uh, to stop signs. This will need to be amended because there are two stop signs on Cross Street. An ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts be it ordained by the city council of the city of Northampton and city council assembled as follows. Section one, that the, three, that the section 312-113 of the code of ordinances be amended as follows. 312-113 section 12 stop and yield intersections, location Cross Street, direction of travel west at the intersection of Florence Road and location Cross Street, direction of travel east at the intersection of Bliss Street. May I have a motion, please? Uh, so moved, Jamie. Second, Jody. So this came to be, uh, again, based on our assessment of the overall area, we looked at the intersection of Cross Street and Florence Road. And again, we have the same 6,000 or more, greater than 6,000 uh, cars per day on Florence Road. So we certainly hit the warrants there. Now, when we get to the other end at Bliss Street, this is a long standing sight line problem because when you reach that intersection and you look to the right, uh, not only is there a hedge there, which is going to be dealt with by uh, us either cutting the hedge down or the resident cutting the hedge down, it's, it's really their choice. Um, but there's also a mailbox and a utility pole. And it, there's a, a tree which once leafed out um, really creates, I think, difficulty in, in sight lines at that intersection. So this is sort of a longstanding problem. Um, and again, we're in the area and we wanna correct any potential dangerous uh, sight line issues or traffic movements. Um, so that is uh, how these uh, that is how this ordinance came to be. Um, I don't procedurally, and I'm sorry, I'm not sure if we need to amend this to say stop signs on Cross Street. I have to defer to the counselors in the room or if that's just a Scribner's error that we can correct before this goes to council. To me, that seems like a Scribner's error that would be corrected before it goes to council. Does that, is that what you would understand, Councilor Nash? I agree. Okay. Okay. Perfect, that works for us, thank you. 
Beth, can you please make a note of that, that it, prior to sending this to Lara, um, we'll, we'll need to address that. Thank you. We'll be addressing that, the TPC or certain counselors or? No, Ma Maggie will address it. Oh, Maggie, okay. Okay, roll call. Uh, no, it, no, sorry, we're, sorry, we're not there yet. Oh, sorry. We're almost there. <laughs> almost. So okay. I, I have a request, uh, Director Lascalia, that um, your um, description of why the warrant is necessary for, uh, especially for the stop sign at Bliss Street, it will be helpful, um, you know, just a few sentences to uh, read into the record at council. Sure, I can do that. Thank you. Yep. Councilor Jarrett, I see your hand up. Let me, uh, let me unmute you. Go ahead. Yes, thank you, Director. Um, so I've sent uh, notices to everyone on Cross Street, uh, whether by email, if I have it, or otherwise I left a letter. Um, and um, received positive feedback uh, on all of the stop signs, uh, especially the one at Bliss Street. Um, and then I also emailed uh, everyone in general in, in the neighborhood. That was more for the next item. But, uh, but people are very appreciative. Oh, good. Thank you for letting us know that. I thought that, it, again, this uh, stop sign, it, uh, this has been uh, really one of our most requested items. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Any other discussion? I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, Councillor Jarrett, was that the stop, the positive feedback was on the stop sign on Cross or Bliss? Or? Both. Both. Um, and also the one for Scanlon. Oh, all of them. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, roll call please. Donna, excuse me, Donna. Yes. Jody. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Devin. Yes. Wayne. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Karen. Yes. Jim. Yes. Passes unanimously. Okay, thank you. Next item is a proposed ordinance for cross street no parking zones. So we have the ordinance and then also a map. I will read the ordinance. This is upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission, an ordinance relative to parking on cross street. An ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts be it ordained by the city council of the city of Northampton and city council assembles as assembled as follows, section one, section 312-102 of the code of ordinances be amended as follows. 312-102, parking one, prohi parking prohibited at all times, location, cross street side northerly from Florence Road to Bliss Street, location, cross street southerly Florence Road, a point Two, a point 183 feet easterly from Florence Road, location, cross street southerly, side southerly from Bliss Street to a point 120 feet westerly from Bliss Street. And I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please. I move we positively recommend this to council. This is Devin. Second, this Jody. is Jody. Thank you. Um, so now that the map is up, uh, I can uh, better explain this. So. Um, this was, again, part of our efforts to provide some level of relief to uh, the parking congestion that was very problematic last summer. So uh, what, what we did was a very thorough assessment of this area. Um, the, the chief of police and I actually visited this area, walked the streets, uh, looked closely at, at you know, the intersections, the lay of the land. We um, sort of experienced a, a, a very unprecedented level of congestion 
Uh, last summer, spoke with uh, Councillor Jarrett, Councillor Labarge. Uh, we heard uh, again uh, testimony at, at this commission by a lot of residents um, about just sort of the the number of cars. So based on all of that. Um, the, our engineering division did a, a very thorough look at the existing site conditions on this street. And we have um, taken all of these factors into account to come up with this proposal, again, to provide some level of relief for uh, the, the congestion that existed. So what the ordinance states is that there will be no parking on the river side the entire length of the street and additionally there will be no parking allowed um, the distances that i specified in the ordinance uh, at the intersections of florence road and cross street and bliss street and cross street and the reason for that restriction uh, close to the intersection is for it, A, for sight lines, but B, also to allow cars to safely achieve turning movements. So, it, you know, we already have existing parking regulations that prohibit parking close to an intersection. And there's a reason for that, um, because, you know, when people are trying to make the corner, um, they, they might struggle, um, particularly if there's par cars parked close by. So we felt like uh, this proposal was kind of a, 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 the best marriage as possible or uh, that was possibly able to be achieved between sort of the comments that we heard from the neighborhood, the engineering dynamics of the street, which I'll get into in a moment, um, and, and sort of what our ultimate goal is, which is again, to achieve some level of relief. Um, from an engineering standpoint, we are recommending not parking on the riverside because this is an area that has country drainage. So we have sheet flow that comes off the hillside, off the blacktop, sort of where it rolls onto the shoulder of the street and then goes into the gravel hard pack area. So we don't want people parked on top of that gravel hard pack by the river. We certainly don't want them driving on and off the shoulder of the road because that ultimately degrades the side of the asphalt, causing it to crumble. Um, and, and then that starts to sort of create, you know, the degradation of the roadway that gets us to the reason that Cross Street was in the condition that it was in um, prior to it being resurfaced. So we don't want to replicate that. There is more formal drainage down by Bliss Street, but we want to help that drainage work by keeping cars off the shoulder of the road. Additionally, we want to be careful. Uh, it, it, anytime you have cars that are parked directly across from someone's house and they're trying to back out of their driveway, um, that starts to become problematic for turning radiuses. So, um, you know, when, when we looked at kind of the engineering specifics of this road, that was what we came up with. Um, and additionally, really nine or 10 months out of the year, anyone who's parked here is likely going to be visiting or, you know, is a guest of um, someone in these houses. So rather than forcing them to walk across the street, it, it's a little more convenient parking in, in front of their houses. So um, that's a little bit of the rationale behind why we recommended parking where we did. Um, I, I just like Chief Casper to maybe say a, a few words about kind of what we saw last summer and, and just kind of her role in, in helping me to sort through this. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think we did the best we could to find a middle ground. It was very clear from listening to a lot of residents that many people wanted this to feel like still a welcoming street where they could have interactions with people who were parking on the street and not just see a whole bunch of no parking signs. Uh, but on the flip side, we also wanna make sure that we could get emergency vehicles through, uh, particularly fire trucks. You know, our, our cars are relatively small, but fire trucks are not. And trying to make those corners, uh, the corners with the no parking uh, that would be posted, uh, you, you just can't make those corners in a fire truck uh, if there's vehicles there. So that's what the ends are for as well, to let emergency vehicles through. So this should, 
you know, resolve some of the concerns that we, we received over the summer about an, a street that's too narrow for emergency vehicles and also people who are in their driveways trying to back out and they had trouble getting out of their own driveways because there were cars on both sides of the street. So this is a way that's welcoming. People can come and park here, but also allows for emergency vehicles and the local residents to park on the street if they want and get in and out of their driveways. Thank you, Chief, I appreciate that. Um, so the other thing that I'll add is, you, you know, the chief and I had arranged for the installation of temporary no parking signs. Um, it, it, and again, that is not a long term solution and, and certainly not something that we're going to want to do uh, next summer. So I, what we are looking for is a solution for this neighborhood um, it, so that we don't have to um, you know, just kind of keep spinning our wheels here, part in the transportation pun. Um, I will add that that probably at the height of the problem, there, there were a, a lot of cars parked here, um, you know, maybe upwards of 30, um, which is a lot of cars to be parked on a street like this. Um, with, the, with the new parking zones, it, you know, depending on how people park, um, each parking space, you know, takes each parked car takes about 20 feet. Um, so, it, you know, you could get anywhere between eight to eight to 10 cars here. Um, so, it, you know, it, it's certainly not going to allow parking for 30 or 40 people, but it, it gives some level of access and certainly allows um, the residents, you know, visitors dependent, dependent upon the timing of everything. Um, the other thing I will add, and, and I see Councillor Labarge has joined us. Welcome, Councillor. Um, I, I will add that the, the Councillor and I had a lot of conversation about Florence Road and people sort of pulling off um, Florence Road. Um, that's a, kind of a, a separate area and, and separate um, from from this, there are already ordinances that prohibit stopping in a in a travel lane. Um, so, so that's not wrapped into this ordinance. This is a, a standalone ordinance for for cross street, and that's what we're focused on. But I did want to mention that since I saw um, Councillor here. Um, yes, I see your hand up, and I will, um, Cindy, if you could unmute her, that would be great. Cindy, you're muted. Okay, Councillor, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Donna. Um, the concern I have, which you just talked about, which I know we're not talking about Florence Road, we're talking about Cross Street. My concern is with Florence Road, with all the problems we had right near that speed hump and also toward the intersection and having cars parked right after that speed hump on the right hand side, dropping people off. It was a lot occurring there and you did put up those nonstop, I mean, no parking signs, which was extremely helpful. But I, I like this idea about cross street and I, I can't answer for the residents. I mean, Councillor Jarrett, I do now had some talking with quite a bit of residents after about the no parking and so forth like that. The thing that I had concerns about is many of the homes, Donna, which you and I had talked with residents also on Cross Street about if they had company, where would they park? Right, on, on Cross Street. And, and yeah. that was why we built this ordinance the way we did. So, so we... So it would cover if they do have company coming, they would be able to park in front of their homes, not across. Right? Correct. We're estimating that we could, that, you know, again, depending on how people park, uh, between eight and 10 cars would be able to fit within these parking zones. So I, on the map, uh, on, on that bottom map, you see the, the yellow section there. So yes. within, within that yellow section, we're estimating uh, between eight and 10 cars, again, depending on how people place their vehicle, uh, would okay. be able to fit in that section. Thank you. Okay, is there any other discussion on this? 
Well, I would, Councillor Nash, um, I would like to say I, I appreciate all of the uh, research and effort that went into coming up with this proposal. Um, I think that uh, in terms of if we have that rush of folks uh, wishing to access the river again uh, this summer, we're, we're going to need to uh, do a little forward thinking in terms of like where the overflow for that parking might go. But I think in terms of what's effective for this street, we're not eliminating parking. We're putting parking in uh, the, the places that are best uh, safest for folks on the street and also that supports the engineering of the road that it won't degrade over time. So I, 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 re I really appreciate all of the thought that went into this. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Jared, I see your hand raised. We'll unmute you in a moment. Or we will try to unmute you. There we go. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, Director Lascalia, thank you for spending uh, a while with me explaining the whole situation, the reasoning for the positioning uh, of the parking. And um, I think that this is a good, uh, good, good compromise solution. <clears throat> I agree with what Councillor Nash said uh, as well. Um, and I'm not sure I was uh, kicked out briefly, but I, I got back in but um, the the positioning um, of the driveways will help create some uh, courtesy one way uh, places for people to pull over. I'm not sure if you mentioned that, but I think that's another good reason to have it uh, on, on the, the house side rather than the river side. Um, and uh, again, you know, everyone on Cross Street has been notified about this. I actually haven't received direct feedback from anyone there, but they certainly uh, had the opportunity and um, I, I think that, that this will, uh, perhaps we will see less of the drop-offs happening actually on Florence Road because there will be a place um, to go on Cross Street. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, and um, that's, uh, that's about it. So thank you all. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, yeah, and what I would say uh, about Florence Road uh, to Councillor Labarge is that that in the event that we do need to address that, I, I would address that separately from this ordinance. So that uh, you know is very mindful of that, and the creation of this ordinance is very specific to to Cross Street and and that area. Um, and, and we're not up on Florence Road, but um, we will take a hard look at that. Um, again, there are ordinances that prohibit stopping in the traveled way. Um, so maybe people might just need to be reminded of that. And, and we could look at some, you know, non-regulatory signage around that, just sort of a reminder to folks like, don't stop here. Um, so we can certainly look at, at, at some possibility like that. Um, yes, Councillor, I see your hand is up. So we'll unmute you here. Councillor, you should have a message asking you to, there you go. No? There you go. Sorry about that. But anyways, I know we're off track right now and we're talking about Florence Road, but I have great concerns and I am going to talk with you, Donna, because you actually saw how they apparently even went up above the sidewalk and into that area. So... No matter if it's cross street or not, it's affected Florence Road. It's affected an area that is extremely dangerous with that speed hump and cars just going up on the sidewalk and into the area. So I would like to talk to you about that. Okay, sure. And and again, that, that may very well be, be back in front of this commission, you know, in terms of timing, um, it, it's January, so uh, you know by the time this goes to council, gets referred to committee, and then goes back to council for two readings. I'm very mindful that we need time to to get signs up and and implement this, and you know get stop signs in and stripe the road. 
uh, hopefully as part of our road striping contract at the beginning of, of the construction season. So I want to make sure that I'm giving us sufficient time to implement all of this. So um, in, in terms of getting this done, that was the push to have this on the agenda this month. But I hear you loud and clear, Councillor. And I want to thank you again, um, Donna. In regards about Cross Street, talking with many people about that area. And th this plan is absolutely, I think it's gonna work. I think people will be happy about it. If not, they're gonna contact us. There's no question about it. If there's a problem, I'm used to that. <laughs> That's true, thank you. Councillor Foster, go ahead. Thanks. Um, Councillor Nash basically said what, what I was thinking, but I wanted to follow up with a question. Um, First, um, Dracula Skelly and Chief Casper, thank you for going and, and looking at the area and for the work you did. Um, you really answered my questions about why the no parking zones are where they are, why um, parking is allowed aside with the houses. My follow-up question is just in your visit to that neighborhood or as you've been looking at it, if you've identified where you anticipate uh, potential overflow parking to be going, um, and if so, if we might wanna look at that proactively or um, you know, if, if you're planning to see sort of how this goes on Cross Street this summer and then address um, if there's overflow parking somewhere that, that's um, too much for a neighborhood addressing it at the time. Yeah, I, I mean, it's a good question and we have to sort of be careful that we don't start to, to creep into areas that we may not creep need to creep into. Um, and, and, you know, you try to sort of, um, you know, model human behavior, and that's very difficult to do sometimes. So I, I think that, you know, we have Cross Street, which is a known problem area, and that's what we sought to resolve. Um, anything else is really conjecture. We did not receive complaints other than Florence Road. Um, we did not receive complaints from the, any other side streets. It, it, it didn't seem that that anyone was pushing anywhere else. And, and remember, we had the entire road posted last summer. So, uh, you know, once we flagged that for no parking, there was an opportunity for people to push. Um, and, and to my knowledge, aside from the issues which we've discussed on Florence Road, which, which were really limited to people just sort of stopping their car and, and unloading, it's not people weren't really parking on Florence Road, um, they were just stopping in the traveled way. Um, which again is is illegal anyway in and of itself. Um, so so we did not see a push to other areas. You know when the chief and I sort of walked the area, and when engineering and I discussed how we were going to resolve this, we did seek to address the stop sign on Scanlon Avenue just from a traffic volume perspective. You know it it, it didn't seem right to put one at uh, Cross and Florence Road and not Scanlon and Cl Florence Road, which was the next street over. Um, but I I don't think that there's anything further we need to do. Um, it, and if you know, let's say some street that we could not anticipate becomes problematic, we do have the ability to temporarily no post it as we did last, or temporarily post it for no parking um, as we did last summer. So that's my long winded answer to your question. I have one more question and it's yes. kind of in the weeds and it is that, um, that I noticed a number of the properties have rural mailboxes. And I, I, I'm guessing that the mail uh, people show up and they pull up with the truck. They're not getting out of the truck to put the mail in. And I'm wondering um, if there, we have regulations about where rural, rural mailboxes can be placed. Because some of them are at the end of the walkways that are in the center of the property rather than right by the end of the driveway. Um, maybe this is too in the weeds for any of us to know without looking into the ordinance, but, <laughs> um, it, yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely something we considered. Where are people's mailboxes? Um, okay. You know, mailboxes in the public right away can be problematic for many reasons, not the least of which is snow and snow plows, as many of us know, um, but also uh, for, for parking reasons like this. Um, so I, 
I can't say, you know, what the U.S. Postal Service will do if they show up and there is a car parked directly in front of a mailbox. I, I certainly can't speak for them. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, they're certainly all over the city and all over the world. And, and I, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> well, we will know if there's a complaint. So <laughs> um, no anyway. doubt. OK. Thanks. OK, is there any other discussion on this proposed ordinance? Anything else? OK, going once. All right, hearing none. Beth, roll call, please. You're muted, Beth. Donna, how do you vote? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Nancy? Nancy Forstall? We may have lost her. Let me use the phone. I think she might. Up oh, there she goes. Nancy? Okay. Yes. Karen? Yes. Jim? Yes. Passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, next item on the agenda is updates on certain previously submitted traffic calming requests. So this is a follow through on the new process that this commission voted on a couple of months back whereby uh, folks are able to submit a traffic calming request. It, it comes before this commission for discussion and input once uh, police and DPW ha have um, done some level of data assessment. And then what PD and, and DPW do is look at the data that's been collected, listen to the resident's concern, um, and at that point, it really becomes a, a departmental issue about what we're uh, recommending in terms of either enforcement or um, uh, some level of, of signage or, or some action by our departments to resolve the issue. So what uh, we wanted to do is bring before you two recently submitted traffic calming requests. The first is the South Street request to close the loop on this and, and sort of show um, the, this commission and whoever else might be watching how the process works and, and how it's um, working a little more smoothly, we would hope, than it has in the past. So um, it, again, this is just meant uh, as an update and uh, the chief and I will, will kind of speak to each of these um, and, and certainly happy to field questions about it. So the first is the traffic calming request for South Street. So um, people are at this meeting or on this commission may recall that uh, Councillor Thorpe and, and uh, one of the residents from South Street appeared uh, to discuss uh, speeding drivers on South Street. And um, I, I, I think it was termed a disregard for the speed limit. And so um, DPW and the police department did an assessment of, of kind of existing conditions. And what we have included in, in the, the agenda for this month's meeting is the traffic calming request response form that was signed by uh, Chief Casper and by me that says what we're actually going to do about it. Um, so I, I will turn this over to Jody just for a brief description of uh, what she found in review of the uh, speed data and uh, what her recommendation is or what the action from her department would be. And then I will briefly talk about what the action from my department will be. Ed Chief. Thank you. So I took a look at South Street and there's two pieces of data that the police department is really responsible to measure in this process. One is collision. So we do a collision analysis of a five-year look back. In this instance, we identified 69 collisions over a five-year period. 
And it, that's, it's a long stretch of road. South Street is long. Sometimes, you know, if we're doing an intersection, just an intersection look, we might hear numbers like 20 or 25 that would be, uh, you know, concerning if it was there. But 69 is a lot, but it is a long stretch of road with a lot of intersections along it. So looking at that, we definitely noticed that after a lot of them had clustered down around where CrossFit is and that new, it was new at the time that this had gone in. And I think what happened is drivers became more familiar with this area, knew that there were going to be runners, people crossing the street, people walking their dog, people pulling their cars in. So we saw a decline in accidents in that area a, a short time. I'm looking at my notes on the right here, a, a short time after um, that went in. And then also in 2019, in June, uh, the DPW put in a speed sign that many of you have probably passed that uh, flashes. I pass it every morning on my way in. It flashes on the speed and it shows you the speed limit. Um, that I think has also contributed to decreased in collisions. It slowed drivers down. Statistically speaking, usually those cause drivers to slow, to slow down by about 10% for about a mile. That's how long the impact of that lasts and South Street is about a mile long. So I think that was a great placement of that sign. So overall, uh, really in the last few years, nothing, nothing that really stands out on South Street as a problem related to anything that we can necessarily fix. You know, we have people who are uh, tailgating here and there or not paying attention or whatever else, but uh, nothing unique to the street. Then I took a look at speed data. So we put up a covert uh, speed data. It's a little box that we basically post on the street. Uh, that nobody really notices. So unlike those big signs, some could argue that if you're collecting data using the sign that shows your speed, that has an impact on drivers and they may slow down versus these covert boxes that no one really notices. So we installed that in August and we measured over 62,000 vehicles between August 19th and August 25th. The average speed of drivers was 34 miles per hour. Out of those 62,000 vehicles, only 353 were traveling over 44. Um, so just to give you a, it's a lot of vehicles and not very many that are going at a, at a speed that would be really um, more dangerous for the street. So overall, uh, from the police department standpoint, uh, nothing uh, too notable in, in accidents and collisions. I think the steps we've taken so far with the addition of the sign at the end of the street, as I mentioned, the speed sign, and then uh, we did have some of the uh, in, in street paddleboard signs, whatever you call them, Don. I know you have a fancy name for them, but I call them in street paddleboards. But the kind that you mark on crosswalks, um, I think that slowed people down. And drivers coming into the neighborhood who are coming from a high speed area may not even know where those crosswalks are along South Street. So now those are marked out. So my recommendations was simply to do some intermittent speed enforcement, really just to make sure that there's a visibility there. Sometimes people are not surprised when they see a police car uh, doing traffic radar, knowing that there's a cruiser there sometimes slows drivers down and then using the seasonal in-street pedestrian crossing sign uh, when there's no snow on the ground will help drivers uh, slow down just by having an obstacle in the street and also mark the crosswalks. So that was my recommendation for South Street. Thanks, Chief. And, and I'll add that when we assess these complaints as they come in, we look at factors on our end that are more related to roadway construction and design and engineering. And so one, of the, I mean, really the first thing we do is we determine, is there a speed regulation for this street? Meaning has a study been done on the street to establish a regulatory speed limit? And if so, what is the regulatory speed limit and is it signed appropriately? So, it, you know, there, there is a regulatory speed limit for the street. It is signed appropriately. Sometimes speed limit signs can get damaged or fall over or defaced or whatever. Um, so we want to make sure if we need to replace signage that we actually do that. Um, in this case, uh, it, that was not warranted. Um, the other thing that I'll mention about South Street is the pavement condition is poor. Um, it, it needs uh, it's probably beyond the mill and overlay at this point and into full reclaim. Um, it's a very, very wide street. This would be a very costly undertaking. Um, it's certainly very much uh, on our radar to address, but um, there is no uh, reconstruction planned at this point. So 
it is likely uh, that heavy trucks hitting degrading asphalt are contributing to the perception that the cars and trucks are traveling faster than they actually are. And, and the uh, speed data collected by the police supports that theory. Um, so again, uh, what you'll see on page two of this response form is uh, there's a, there are two recommended city actions here, as the chief said, uh, uh, potentially uh, some increased uh, uh, speed enforcement, as well as the, uh, we call them pedestrian paddles, uh, sort of colloquially within the department. Um, but those, it, you know, they certainly bring a, a lot of visibility to crosswalks, but it's not appropriate to have those out uh, in the winter because they'll get destroyed um, by snow plows and, and they'll be in the middle of our snow and ice control operation. Um, so those are really a seasonal solution. Um, and we sort of rely on drivers being trained, um, you know, the nine months out of the year when it's not snowing, you know, we'll put them out there. Um, they definitely get beat up. They get hit a lot more than you would think they do. They, they're they very expensive. We spend an awful lot of money every year um, replacing them. I I can't for the life of me figure out how someone could hit these things and keep driving because um, they're pretty sturdy, but, um, but it happens all the time. So um, anyway, that aside, that is our recommended city action. We consider uh, this request closed. And what we do is we uh, maintain uh, a, a very detailed uh, database of all of um, the data that we have collected around this request, as well as our response, the initial response um, or, or the initial request by the requester. Um, so that way we can use this as a reference in the event that we were to receive another request for this area. Um, and we can sort of see, you know, what we're getting and who we're getting it from. Um, but I, I want, we wanted to sort of close the loop with the commission that, that at this point, this is a departmental um, action for both police and, and DPW and, and with, with no other recommendations. So I'm happy to take uh, questions or comments on that if there are any. I have a comment. Um, Councillor Nash, go ahead. This is so superior to the old way of doing this that, um, you know, that we're getting responses in a timely manner. You know, people have concerns about their street. It's based on real data. I really appreciate, you know, the, you know, that uh, both you, Director Lascalia and Chief Casper have been so involved with doing the, you know, the detail work on this. It's it's really great. And um, it's, you know, there's the data and we, you know, we can, we can see that these decisions are based on what's really going on on the street. And um, that, so thank you. This is, this is much more improved and um, in onward and forward director. Nice work. <laughs> thank you, counselor. Appreciate that. Any other comments on South Street? I would just, uh, this is Jamie, I would just echo Jim's uh, sentiment. I uh, really do appreciate the research and effort that went into this. I live in the neighborhood and I, I am off of South Street and I totally understand what these people are talking about. Even with this data, which looks pretty good, those 450 cars or whatever, they're still disturbing to the people in the neighborhood. And I understand there's little we can do about it, maybe a little bit more enforcement. I uh, just want to recognize that too. Thank you. Appreciate your comment. Councillor Jarrett. Hold on a moment. We'll unmute you. Go ahead. There we go. Yeah, I'll second what uh, Councillor Nash and Jamie said of uh, that this seems like a great protocol. I have a couple of questions about um, the lane width. I noticed it said these are these are eleven foot lanes, and um, you know the Institute for Transportation Engineers in their handbook it talks about how ten feet should be the default width for general purpose lanes at speeds of forty five miles per hour or less. Uh, so I uh, well, one question was um, why why are the why are they striped at eleven feet? Um, <clears throat> and then the second was uh, could would there be and I know this is, this, this is a state road too, so there's considerations there. Um, the second would be, 
would, would there be a consideration when there's repaving um, <clears throat> to narrow the road uh, and potentially lower the speed limit? Because as, as we know, the large trucks uh, go, the faster they go, there's an exponential increase in the damage that they do to the road. So that it seems like um, if it was possible to slow them down further, uh, then we would have a double, you know, it would be better for the neighbors, uh, neighborhood and then also save us money. That are all good questions. Um, I, I will try to address all of them. If I forget one, please remind me uh, of which I forgot. Um, but regarding the 10 foot travel lanes, this is a, a definitely something that sort of gets um, bandied around within the DPW. Um, we have 10 foot wide snow plows. Um, so a 10 foot wide travel lane, even in a car feels very, very tight. Um, it, 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 that sort of, you know, visual line striping can certainly serve to slow people down. It can also serve to create uh, the, the courtesy one-way traffic that we talk about. So, um, for example, if, if you were on a, a street that was two lanes in the same direction, separated by a dotted line that had 10-foot travel lanes on each side, and there were, you know, a bus stop in the right-hand lane and a truck board driving down the, trying to pass it, uh, what you would find is that that truck, which might be nine or nine and a half feet wide, would actually feel like it couldn't get by the vehicle that was stopped um, because it didn't have enough space. And that's where you end up with courtesy one-way traffic. So the concept of a 10-foot travel lane on a heavily truck traveled route is sort of a controversial idea because it can definitely create a little bit of traffic congestion. Um, Wayne would tell me that's exactly what you want. Um, and, and we, we absolutely, um, you know, have had uh, plenty of good debates about it. Um, so the larger answer to your question is when we redesign that street, um, we will look very carefully at design aspects uh, of it. And, you know, the decision on the travel lanes will be made really in accordance with best practices. I mean, there's, there's a lot of asphalt there. Um, and we, I, I don't, feel like that's something that would be uh, good to put back as it is. Um, there, there's a lot of road there um, and it, it, it's too much. And I think anyone who looked at that would, would agree with me. Um, so in, in terms of reducing the speed limit, um, as I mentioned earlier, there is a regulatory speed limit there, which is the result of a speed limit study which is a formal engineering study that's done by like an engineering firm and then approved by Mass DOT. In order to change a speed limit, a formal engineering study has to be done, submitted to Mass DOT for approval and then implemented. So that's something that the city would have to choose to undertake if we wanted to alter that speed limit. Um, you know, if, if we wanted to take that 35 and, and put it to something else, we don't get to choose what that goes to. I mean, we just say we want you to study the street and determine if the speed limit is appropriate or not. We don't, we don't get to say, well, you know, we actually want the speed limit to be 20 here. Um, the, the speed limit is designed or, or the speed limit is sort of rated in part based on the design of the road. So if we were to completely alter the, the geography of that road and shrink the travel lanes, um, you, you know, then we could engage in a speed limit study that may or may not give us the, re the desired result. Um, so there's a lot of ifs, um, if then that, that happens here. Um, it, but again, we're looking at a multi-million dollar project and that is um, not on our to-do list for, for this summer. Certainly it would, it would probably be a multi-year design process when we do pave that. But I don't know if that addresses all of your comments, but. Um. Yeah, it does. Thank you so much. I'm glad to know that the, those, those are on, on your radar for when this uh, eventually happens. And I know Councillor Nash has also done quite a bit of work in thinking about speed limits and um, what it takes to slow vehicles down. 
Um, so just want to publicly thank Councillor Nash as well for that work. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Does anyone ha else have any comments on on uh, South Street traffic calming request? Okay, hearing none, next item on the agenda is traffic calming request for Emerson Way. Um, so this request, uh, I, I purposely put on the agenda just to, to publicly discuss the constraints that city departments have in responding to residents. So some of you may recall the president of the Homeowners Association, his name is James Greenman. He appeared during public comment to ask this commission for assistance a couple of months back in dealing with uh, speeding problems on Emerson Way. And he then followed that up, or, or, or rather before his appearance, he had uh, submitted a, a traffic calming request. And his complaint about Emerson Way was speeding cars. Um, so I, I put this on the agenda, and it has not been discussed here, and, and there isn't necessarily a uh, data per se on this um, because Emerson Way is a private way. And the reason I put this on the agenda is so that uh, everyone kind of understands the constraints that, that the chief of police and, and DPW um, and other city departments deal with in, in sort of wanting to be responsive to residents, but being constrained by our abilities um, which are really relegated to public ways, not private ones. Um, so, it, you know, the chief and I did a, a very thorough response to the Emerson Way Homeowners Association. I have been with, in touch with them and I have emailed the entire board, but um, one of the first things we have to do is determine, is, is this road a, a public way? Um, and so what we do is we have to pull uh, the actual um, subdivision records, um, which are typically attached to the deeds of, of the property owners. And what we find with Emerson Way is that as a condition of the subdivision, um, it, the city is not responsible for any maintenance on this road. It cannot be petitioned to um, take ownership of it. Um, and, and what I did was I appended those documents to our traffic calming response form. And it, in the response, what I communicated to the uh, board at Emerson Way is, is that the city is not able to direct any resources to assist in addressing the speeding problem, which it, for all intents and purposes is on private property. Um, so I did have a lengthy conversation with Mr. Greenman and I uh, detailed several options uh, that might be available to the homeowners association, including speed humps or signage or line striping. I offered um, technical specifications to him and, and other sort of uh, technical advice if, if the board were interested. Um, it, but ultimately, uh, the, the chief is not able to uh, engage in enforcement uh, on private property, and the DPW is not able to uh, alter their roadway in any way um, as the maintenance and, and construction of anything on Emerson Way is their responsibility. I'll, I'll just let the chief um, elaborate on, on what I just said um, a little bit, if she can. Go ahead, chief. Sure, I, I don't have too much to say on it other than to, to really echo echo what you had said. I mean, I did take a look at the collision data. There was one really minor accident in the five year period, certainly nothing too concerning. And I didn't do a, a speed data review. I didn't have the covert uh, speed measurement device installed because we, we don't do speed enforcement on private roadways. So um, from our perspective, uh, we just made a recommendation of closing this and uh, not too much that we can do with this traffic coming request through this body. Okay. Thanks, Chief. And, and again, sorry, my dog is barking. Hold on just a second. I'm sorry, I'll be right back. That's COVID light for you. 
Sorry about that. I just had to let the dog out or she was going to keep making noise. Um, so anyway, I, I wanted to add this to the agenda, agenda just because I know a lot of uh, counselors do get a request sometimes from their residents who are very frustrated um, it, a lot of times with public works inability to respond to something like this. Um, so I wanted to just kind of have a conversation about this in a, in a public forum and, and sort of identify what the issues are. Councillor, I see you with your hand up. Councillor Labarge, that is. Hold on just a second and we'll unmute you. I've been asking if there's a message you might have to answer to. There you go. Um, Emerson Way is off of Pertzbit Road. I have been at Emerson Way quite a bit. And about a year ago, last year at some point, the beginning of the year, um, I was with, let's see, Patrick Mahoney and the chair of the board of trustees. And we went in to see Carolyn Mesh. And it was the problem of it being a private street. Due to the builder who apparently was finishing off, I think it's the last road now in that project. I'm not positive that there was great concerns of the cost of taking care of the streets on Emerson Way. So Carolyn went through the whole procedure about on the deed and so forth like that, because she did look up their deed and it being a private street and that she really felt at this at that point it would not become a city street. There was something involved there. So, anyways, she did suggest that talking about the speed humps, talking about doing forms of different types of painting and so forth like that. But she really, the only thing she could do because in planning was to tell them right now, there was nothing that the city could do because it was a private street. And then the figure of a homeowners association and a private street, you have to take care of that street. You have to take care of the plowing. The cost is phenomenal. If they need a new road, the cost is phenomenal. So I have to say it is a heavily traffic street. There's no question about it. There are children there. I don't know. I don't know what we can do to help them except for what you're suggesting. But it's a beautiful area. And I, I, I don't know, because it's a private road and it's off my hands. Yeah, and, and one of the reasons that I appended the planning board decision, which again is, is part of the deed of every property there, it specifically states at no time shall the grantee of any lot or their heirs, successors and assigns petition the city of Northampton to accept Emerson Way as a public way. This is an irrevocable condition of subdivision approval. Exactly. So, I, I mean, that again, and as I explained to Mr. Greenman, um, this really relegates uh, police and, and DPW and certainly this commission to a place where, it, you know, I can certainly give them advice. Um, and, and that is the extent of the assistance that we are able to offer. You're right. And see, Carolyn had the, the, the deed, the language, everything on it. And she explained to them exactly what you're saying now. You know, so their hands are tied. And I think I see your hand up. So how do you, since it's in the deed, how can they break that deed? How can they make it a city street, Donna? I, I, I'm certainly not a, a, a lawyer and, and I, I, I'm not on the planning board. I, I am not sure that that's possible, but that would likely be between um, them and Carolyn Fox, I don't think so. <laughs> it's sad. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Counselor. Devin, I think I saw your hand up. Yeah, th it's not the per uh, Devin, you're muted somehow. Thank there you. you. Yeah, um, it's, it's not the purview of this committee, but I was on planning board when that subdivision was being developed. And it even has a private drainage system. 
and for Councillor Barge, that is all part of the agreement of the sale of those lots to the buyers. They know that they are buying part of a maintenance problem for the street and the water system. So it's, uh, I think about it as a, you know, buyer beware. That was part of what they were doing when they bought into that subdivision. Yep, thank you for that. Any other comments on Emerson Way traffic calming request, which again, we consider closed at this point. Okay, hearing none. Anybody have any new business? Hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved, Devin. Second. Second. Jim. Thank you, Councillor. Any discussion? Beth, when you're ready, roll call, please. You're muted, Beth. Donna, would you like to adjourn? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. And Jim? Yes. Unanimous. It passes. Thank you all. See you next month. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.